Good morning, everyone. I am Pastor Jordan. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you this morning online. And so I am standing right in front of this very important board, the FAIR sign-up sheets. You see, we need, I think, like 100 plus more people or more shifts to be filled. Because without your help, we can't have the FAIR stand. And so we need you to help us out. And so if you have free time, a four hour shift, that'd be great. I know it's hot out there. I'm not a fan of the heat, but I'm so excited to be connecting with the community and the greater Iowa um, state. And so without you, we can't do this. So please sign up. I believe there's a sign up sheet on our website, or you could just stop by at the church and fill out these blanks, put your name in, and we'd be happy to have you join us. with all of you guys this morning and so today I want to talk about getting lost have any of you been lost before like I'm talking really lost have you ever been at like the store and all of a sudden you can't find your parents and you're like where where am I supposed to go that's how I felt lately. Um, driving around Des Moines area, I have to have my GPS at all times. I have to have a compass and I have a compass in my car so then I know where I'm going. So sometimes um, in our gospel reading, especially, they talk about being sent, being called to go places that they haven't been before. And that's kind of like how Pastor Andrea and I are currently. We are in an area where we haven't been, and it can be scary. It can be scary getting lost. It can be scary um, finding new people in our lives and getting to know new people. But here's the thing that I always have to remind myself, that God is with me, that I am never alone when I am getting lost, when I am not sure where God is wanting me to go or say or do, I know that I am not alone and God will be with me at all times. And so as you look at a compass, you'll always find where north is, right? You'll always know where to find places. And that's kind of like our faith. We always know that God is with us. 
And so remember that, my friends, as God calls you to school, as God leads you to go to school, as um, you meet new people, know that you are not alone and that God is walking with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for the ability to trust in you. Help us to trust you when sometimes it's hard. Help us to trust you when we feel lost and we don't know which way is up. God, we give you thanks for this day. Amen. Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13, a prophet without honor. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own tone, town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Jesus sends out the twelve. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached the pe that people that should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Good morning, and I thank you for joining us uh, this morning for worship here at West Des Moines United Methodist Church. I am excited uh, to be with you today on this uh, first Sunday of me preaching and being able to be with you on this recorded worship service. So as we start today in worship, we are in the book of Mark chapter 6, and we hear Jesus calling his disciples for the first time to go out and to make disciples. So before we get started, I want to ask you a question. Would you call yourself a person that is always really prepared? Now, I don't know about you, but anytime our family goes on vacation, probably about two weeks before uh, the vacation happens, uh, especially when the kids were little, I would begin to lay out the clothes that the kids would take on vacation, making sure that I had everything that we could possibly need on vacation. I would do that with the clothes. I would do that with the, the bathroom stuff, everything. And not only that, but I would create lists. Because again, there's nothing worse than getting to your location and realizing that you forgot something. I can honestly say that I am not a person uh, that can travel and pack everything in a carry-on suitcase and then just leave. I am probably usually always maybe over prepared. I grew up with my mom saying that uh, to be early is to be on time and to be on time is to be late. I am a person who makes lists. I'm a person that uh, finds themselves always super prepared. And that's the same way uh, that I was when we were getting ready to move here to West Des Moines. It was probably already in March that I found myself beginning to tape up our first boxes to be to start creating lists of everything that I wanted to take before we moved down to the house and making sure that all the boxes were labeled so that we could know exactly what was inside. And I wanted to make sure that before that moving truck came that we were totally ready for them to come find myself sometimes getting stressed out um, if I don't find myself completely prepared. 
So when I read our scripture for today from Mark, I had a hard time with it. I had a hard time that Jesus was telling his disciples that they were to take nothing, just the clothes on their back and their staff, and that they were to go out and to begin doing ministry. You know, Jesus reminds them of two things, that he never sends us out unprepared and that he's going to make sure that he provides everything that you and I need. Well, phew, right? At least he's promising that he is going to provide what we need. There was a professor, Leroy Eames, and he was teaching a theology course. But what he realized uh, after a few weeks in his class is that these students were so concerned about reading all of the material that they weren't out doing anything in the community. So he wanted to make sure that they were not only getting the theology piece, but he wanted to make sure that they were getting the practice. So Leroy decided that he would call one of his friends at a local church to be able to take his class to get some hands-on practice. So as soon as he announced to the class that this is what was going to happen, a strange thing began to happen. One by one, his students began to email and to text and to call and say that they were sick. And Leroy tells of one of the students that called and he said, hey, I can't, I can't come tomorrow. I've lost my voice. He said, you've lost your voice? Yep, yep, I can't. I just, I can't go. I've lost my voice. He said, well, but you're talking to me now. So you're talking well enough that, that you could probably go tomorrow and you would be fine. And the student was adamant. He had lost his voice and there was no way that he could go on this trip. And Leroy kind of caught on realizing what was happening. And he quickly said to the student, you know what? You're not sick. You're not sick and I think you're just chicken. You are chicken. And the student was like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a chicken. I just, I just don't feel good. And right away, Leroy says, you know what? You're a chicken. I'm a chicken. Every single one of us in this class is a chicken, but we're going to do it. And there was silence on the phone. And then the student said, you're scared. Even you, even you are scared to go and to do this. And it was in that moment that Leroy realized that he learned two things. He learned about discernment and most of all, he learned about healing and how quickly students right away no longer were sick and wanted to go down to this church and to be able to do ministry. But today we see these disciples being sent out. And can you imagine how they must have felt knowing that they were going out all by themselves for the very first time? But we know that there comes a time, right? For those of us uh, who have had careers and have worked, for those of you maybe younger who haven't yet, but there comes a time when if you want to be a nurse, then you have to be willing to take a patient. And if you're wanting to be a teacher, there comes a time when that, you know, you're finally going to have to work, walk into the classroom. And if you're going to be an attorney, then you have to be willing to walk into the courtroom. There comes a time that Jesus wanted to make sure the disciples knew that they had learned everything they possibly could. They were ready. Jesus had walked with them and showed them. Jesus had healed the sick. He was with the poor. The disciples had seen this. They had seen the way that there might be times when people would shun them or turn their back. The scripture today even says it. The people in Jesus' hometown even questioned who he was and being called. The disciples saw how many people, they would even be killed because they did follow Jesus. So Jesus had prepared the disciples for everything that could possibly happen. But Jesus said there was no more taking notes. There was no more sitting there listening to what Jesus had to say. Now is the time that they had to do it. As many people would say, it's go time. It's time to be the disciple that Jesus had prompted them to be. So today, I think that there's five things 
very quick things that I think that we can learn from uh, our scripture today. And I think the first thing is, is that Jesus gives us in scripture, the blueprint of how you and I are supposed to, do, how we are supposed to be these disciples. Again, Jesus had shown them everything that they were supposed to be doing. And Jesus didn't just sit there and wait for people to come to him, right? Jesus didn't just go to the center of town and, and, and wait for people to come. But Jesus made sure that he and the disciples, they went from town to town. They went from house to house. And one of the things I love about the United Methodist Church is that is exactly how our denomination began. That John Wesley was in the Episcopal Church and in that time in the 1700s, uh, the Episcopal Church would tell people that if you want to come and be a part of church, you want to hear the message, you want to receive communion, that you had to come to town and that you had to, you had to, you had to do it all yourself. But John Wesley realized that there were people who lived miles and miles away from the city. There were people that, that didn't feel like they had the right clothes that they could come to worship. And John Wesley kept saying to the church, well, why, why don't we just go to the people? Why are we staying here in the church when it's our job as disciples to not just stay here, but to finally get out of the pew. And it's time for us to get out of the church and to make sure that we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what you and I are called to do. It's from the founding disciples and it is from our own roots of, as a United Methodist that you and I are called to do this. And I think today, if I could be so bold, it's one of the things that we all have to work on, right? Because we all can can sit here in the pews and, and in our church, maybe for those of you watching on the on the sofa at your dining room, we can say, I want my church to grow. I want young people here. I want, and then we make our list, right? But if we just continue to sit and not do our part, not talk about our faith, not talk about our love for our church, then we will never fill the pews of the church if we aren't willing to do our part. We have to meet Jesus halfway. And that comes to our next part of our scripture. In verse 7, Jesus says that he calls them to go out two by two. And that was customary in Greek and in Jewish culture to make sure that people always went with another person, that you never traveled alone. That way, if something happened or if somebody got hurt, there was always somebody who could testify to make sure that they could testify of what happened or they could go and find help. And Jesus reminds the people then that we're not called to do and to go go make disciples all by ourselves. But Jesus says to take somebody else, to find that friend that can go with you, and that you and I never ever have to do this ministry thing all by ourselves. I mean, stop and think about the Apostle Paul, right? If you go and look in Acts 13, Paul is sent out for the very first time to go and begin ministry. But when Paul is called out to go and do that, they just the church doesn't just say go and do this Paul by yourself but they sent somebody with him do you know who it was it was Barnabas and do you know what the word Barnabas means it means son of encouragement boy we all need a Barnabas in our lives right we could probably stop and think about all the Barnabases that are in our lives right now those who lift us up those who give us encouragement, that person that with just a super fast call that they would drop absolutely everything and be there right with us. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says this, two are better than one because they have a better return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity to the man who falls and has no one to help him. I hope you and I will begin to pray about how we can be these disciples that Jesus has called out and begin to pray as well about who's that person that I can call on and, and to participate in this with me so I don't feel like I have to do it by myself. But I also think the third thing that Jesus tells us in our scripture is that he gives us the power to be able to do this. 
Again, if we go back to verse 7, it says that he gave them the authority to cast out the demons. You know, we all have a bunch of excuses, don't we? When we are called or we are asked to go and, and help to do something in our church, or maybe it's in our community, we are full of excuses. Why we can't share our faith, why we can't teach Sunday school, why we can't sing in the choir, teach Bible study. We are full of excuses. But we have to remember and go back to this Mark 6 scripture and remind us again that we are not doing this alone. That whether we have a physical person, a friend, a Barnabas that can be with us in ministry, that you and I have something even greater. That the Holy Spirit is with you and with me. That we are never alone. That God's Spirit dwells and lives and within, is within us each and every single day. That's something pretty amazing to think about, right? That when we don't know what to say or, or, or how to console someone, that if we just pray and we know that God's Spirit will take over the words, will take over our actions, and that God will always bless us. And finally, or the fourth thing I think that we learned from our scripture today is that Jesus says that he's going to give us everything that we need in our ministry. And this is probably the part that, that I struggle the most with. As I said at the beginning, I like to be in control. I like to plan ahead. I like to be prepared for whatever it is. But there's times that you and I just have to to trust. There's times that we just have to have faith that God is going to provide. It's that it's that next step of not knowing what it's going to look like or how it's going to go or if it's going to be successful or if it's going to be a failure, but willing to take that next step and knowing that no matter what, that God is there. When I was in uh, seminary uh, down in Kansas City, it probably was just maybe a month or two after I started uh, classes that a friend of mine came to me and she uh, was a pastor of a church on, um, on Boulevard Street. And that was not too far from the seminary, but it was a really rough part of town. And she talked about that there was a guy who would make chili every Monday night for homeless people. But she said, you know, it was a great ministry, but she just thought that there could be more. So she came to me with this idea and asked, said, you know what, I think we should start something. I think we should start something new. So let's do it. And at first I thought, I mean, I'd never done anything with homeless people. I mean, I just moved there. I still was pretty nervous and scared to, to be in the neighborhood because it was the first time in my life that I was the minority. That I, as a white woman, was the minority within all the other colors of the rainbow that lived in my neighborhood. But you know, for some reason, God told me to take that next step. And you will hear me uh, throughout the years talk about how much I love doing this ministry. It was called Micah, Micah Ministry. And, and even though every Monday night, I would put my clerical collar on, and I would leave with my counseling partner, Amy. And I remember every Monday being scared, being scared of the unknown, who God would place in front of Amy and I to counsel. But it was in that moment as well that I realized that, that God was going to provide Amy and I with whatever we needed, the right words, the right actions. Maybe it was the right person to send them to. But no matter what, God was going to, to be in that and that God was going to bless me, that God was going to bless Amy, God was going to bless this ministry, but most of all, God was going to bless that very person. Again, there's often times that we have to be reminded, right? In the good times, it's super easy for us to give thanks to God that the God is present with us. But Jesus is letting the disciples know that that when they go out and when they go to places where maybe they'll be accepted and loved, but that they will also be places where they're not, that no matter what, the good times, the bad, the struggles and the highs of life, no matter what, that God's going to be there and that you and I can depend on God no matter what. 
finally this morning, uh, Jesus tells them that, um, tells them what they need to be doing. In verse 12, he says that the disciples need to go out and they need to, to preach that everyone needs to repent. And the word repent means to change one's mind. Jesus wanted the disciples to go out and to change the minds of people about sin. He wanted to change their minds about the way that they were living, the way that they were treating one another. And he wanted them to go out and to have them testify. And for those to, to accept Jesus as their savior, as the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I've been here at West Des Moines um, for a little, little over a week, but it has been a blessing for both Jordan and myself to hear of all the ministries that take place here at the church. The way that you are feeding those who are hungry, how you go and you read to kids, the amazing preschool ministry that I continue to learn more and more about, your excitement around bringing children into this place. There are so many great ways that this church is reaching out, making disciples, inviting people to come into worship. But we have to remember that we are not done yet, that there's so much more that we can be doing, so many more that need to hear the good news. I remember a few years back, um, I had a friend named Sarah. And Sarah came to me, we were having coffee one day, and uh, she came in and she was telling me about a friend named, named Renee. And Renee was having just a horrible time. It seemed like things just bad things just kept on happening. She had lost a family member, and then she got fired from her job, and just so many things. And, and Sarah was, came to me and she's like, I don't even know what to do. I, what do I say to her? What do I do? And I asked Sarah, I said, hey, so have you just told her that you're sorry for the things that are happening to her? Have you told her that, you know, hey, can I pray for you? And right away, Sarah was like, well, I, I don't even know if Sarah's religious. I mean, why would I, why would I tell her that I pray for her if I don't know about her faith? And I stopped and I looked at Sarah and I said, well, what, what's the worst that can happen, Right. The worst that can happen is that Sarah says, or that Renee says, no, I don't want you to pray for me. I'm just fine. Or it could be in that moment that a mustard seed of faith is planted inside Renee. That not only does she know that her friend Sarah loves her, but so much that Sarah is going to take time to pray for her. Not only in that moment, but in the coming days. Is there somebody that, that you know today that could use prayer? Someone who's struggling? Someone who has hard decisions that need to be made? How can we be bold? How can we step out in our faith and know that whatever we need, that God is going to be there and provide it? Josh McDowell tells a story about a business executive. And this executive talked about how he does an interview process when they're trying to hide, hire, um, hire people for um, corporations. And he says he kind of wants to, uh, he kind of wants to disarm them. He said, you know, so, so when they come into the office for the interview, you know, I'll loosen my tie and I'll unbutton the first button. I might even take my jacket off and Sometimes I'll even put my foot up on the table just to look relaxed. And he said, and as soon as that happens, he looks at the person who's being interviewed and looks at them and says, what's your purpose in life? And he said, it's amazing how many people in that very moment get all worried and off guard and don't know what to say. But this executive talked about one of the interviews that he had, he had done. And again, he had loosened his tie and he created this, this very mellow and laid back atmosphere. And as soon as this gentleman got comfortable, he looked up at the man and said, what's the purpose of your life? 
And without a blink of an eye, the man looks at him and he says to go to heaven and to take as many people I can with me. The executive said that was the first time that I found myself speechless. Friends, if Jesus stood in front of us today and asked us, what's the purpose of your life? What would you say? How would you answer it? Jesus today is reminding us and asking us and almost requiring us to go out and to make disciples. That we don't have to have everything completely planned. That we don't even need to take anything. You don't even need to take your Bible. But whatever needs to be said, whatever needs to be done, that God is going to give that to us. I hope this week that you will prayerfully consider signing up for the fair board. It's a ministry that is, is, has a long-standing history in our church. Yeah, we're going to be hot. Yeah, you're going to have to work hard. But just stop and think about the ministry that you'll be able to do. The ministry that is going to happen to us. To be able to step out in faith, whether it's the fair board, whether it's helping with vacation Bible school. But I hope that in our weeks and our months and years together, that you and I can create those relationships. That we can share with one another those joys and those struggles. But we can also sit down and have those heart-to-heart -heart talks about the ways that we've stepped out in faith. That we've said yes and how God has done amazing things through your life and through mine. Thank you so much for uh, being with us in worship, and I hope that you have a blessed day. Amen. Will you bow your heads and join me in prayer? God of grace and powerful weakness, at times your prophets were ignored, rejected, belittled, and unwelcome. Trusting that we too are called to be prophets, we pray today that you would fill us with your spirit and support us by your gentle hands, that we may preserve in speaking your word and living your faith, living our faith. Holy God, we lift to you now those joys and those concerns in our lives, knowing that uh, you hear our prayers. So we lift those to you now in a time of silence. Holy and loving God, we pray this as we pray together as your disciples prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now may we go in confidence, knowing that God goes with you to give you the words of hope, comfort, and peace. May God's love flow through you and all those whom you meet. Amen. May we go in peace.